Welcome back, John Fedger with mobilehomeinvesting.net. In this video, we're gonna talk all about wholesaling mobile homes inside pre-existing communities. Uh, we're gonna talk about all of that, what that sort of looks like, what's included, what's not included, what to watch out for. This video is gonna be pretty robust and thorough. If you don't have time to watch it all right now, or you're driving or your mind somewhere else, it may not be the best time to watch it because you're kinda of gonna waste some of your time. Uh, we talk kinda of high level at first, but then we're gonna go into this flow chart behind me, really talking about uh, your business. So I wanna kind of, I want you to be able to put yourself in the shoes of what you're gonna be doing in the future. Um, so with that, before we jump into this flow chart behind me, I have a few things that I wanna to talk to you about just so that we make sure that we're all on the same page um, when we're talking about wholesaling mobile homes. What exactly is wholesaling mobile homes? It's getting a mobile home under contract and then selling that contract to somebody else. Now, the paperwork can look a little bit different depending on what paperwork you're actually using. We're going to talk about that a little bit in this video, um, so let's jump right into it. Now you'll have to excuse me on this video because uh, it's on YouTube, I'm making it for the masses, and I'm not sure if you have 10 years of mobile home experience or you're just getting started with mobile homes. I don't know if you uh, have a lot of money to get started or a little bit of money, so let's talk about, uh, let's kind of get all on the same footing here. Maybe that worked. <laughs> Um, and let's get some basics, let's understand things. Uh, let's go through these uh, quick little print-offs here real quick. Uh, wholesaling is good, but it leaves so much profit on the table. And that's the point. Uh, it's supposed to leave money on the table for the next person. You don't have necessarily money to close the deal, you're busy doing other things, you're busy doing other deals. Uh, or like I said, you don't have the money to close on the home. You don't want to touch the home because it needs so many repairs. Uh, but wholesaling is good. Uh, and it's just a strategy uh, with regards to mobile home investing. Most of us aren't full-time wholesalers when it comes to mobile home investing. Of all the people that I'm working with, it is a small part of our business. Uh, it's rarely somebody's uh, full-time business when they say, you know, I'm going to wholesale mobile homes in parks. Very, very few people around the country are doing that you know, solely and making a business out of it. Little money is required, uh, but you should really, 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 I should have put a few more reallys in there, uh, really know your resale numbers. And by default, you should already have developed a buyer's list. Cash buyers, cash buyers that wanna keep the home there, that wanna move the home, payment buyers as well. Uh, what's realistic? Um, and you want to get these homes under contract, you don't want to waste your time. That's something that we'll come back to this slide or this piece of paper in a little bit, but um, really, really knowing your resale numbers. This wholesaling mobile homes, it's popular for people just getting started with mobile homes, but you really need to know your numbers. These are not uh, single family homes where we can go online all the time and find out what they sold for. Finding out what mobile homes have sold for in the past takes time, takes experience, takes asking a lot of people and following up with a lot of people and really knowing your market. So although wholesaling you would think, oh, I'm going to start mobile home investing by wholesaling because it doesn't require a lot of capital, it requires you know the market really well. Uh, be very realistic with the profit that you expect. Leave profit for the next person. A minimum of three thousand dollars for profit, uh, if you're going to, and that's like what you want to actually make. So you might want to start it making higher than that because people are going to negotiate you. But you want to walk away from a wholesale deal or a consignment deal. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, with a minimum of three grand. Otherwise. You know, if you go lower than that, the, the buyers might talk you down. You, you were planning on getting three grand. Now they talked you down to 1,000 or even less than that. When you bird dog mobile homes, that's what the BD stands for. When you bird dog mobile homes, uh, aim for under a thousand, well, aim for a minimum of a thousand dollars, not under a thousand dollars. If you have to take less than a thousand, so be it. Um, but the bird dogging should be very, very, very little work. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, you do want to take a massive approach. Um, you do not want to put all of your eggs inside of a couple mobile home baskets. There's a lot of mobile homes out there. There's a lot of sellers out there. If you're thinking that you are going to wholesale mobile homes for a full-time business, this that might not be the right mentality. If you're thinking that you want to capitalize on an occasional couple mobile homes here and there and you can wholesale them because that's a valid strategy uh, that makes sense at that one time, then you're more realistic at what you're, at what you're thinking. Um, 
And then wholesaling and brokering, uh, they may be legally questionable in your state without a real estate license, without a mobile home dealer's or broker's license. You can click the link in the description that talks about um, how many deals you are able to complete in your state before the state asks you to become a licensed uh, mobile home dealer or broker in your state. I wanted to talk about that first because if we start talking about the flow chart and we don't have an understanding um, of, of your realistic business. And that's what this video I want to be. I don't want this talk, video to talk about theory. I want this video to be real world for you because with all, uh, in all reality, you will be talking to sellers. You will be making them offers. Uh, you can make them cash offers. You can make them payment offers. And then by all means, you can make a wholesaling type of offer to where you, you find a buyer that is willing to pay what the seller is asking. It's a very easy sell. The seller wants 20,000. Well, you know you can sell this home for more than 20,000, so you agree to find a buyer for 20,000 and you're going to keep a few thousand dollars over that. And that's the profit that you make. So, we're going to talk about that here next. I first want to talk about a bird's eye view. So, before we get into this flow chart and I promise that we will. I know you've been waiting. Hold tight. We're going to talk about one more thing before we kind of go into this like zoomed in uh, flow chart of what's going to actually happen to you and what you should say and do. Uh, I want to talk bird's eye view about what wholesaling really looks like. You, Mr. Man, you go get it. Pew. Now let's talk about the uh, second number here, right here on this. Uh, can I get it out? Yeah, okay. Let's talk about bird's eye view uh, or big picture. Now, number one when it comes to wholesaling, uh, number one is to advertise for sellers. Now, this might be very basic if you already know somewhat how to wholesale and just the general process. I will try to go over this sort of briefly. Um, but bird's eye view is to advertise. Big picture, step number two is screening the incoming um, or the outgoing calls. If you're calling sellers, if sellers are calling you, you want to screen them. Either you can do it yourself or you can have an automated service or you can have a phone system uh, that routes calls to you or it automatically kind of screens away people. They have to press one or press two if they're a buyer or seller. They have to listen to a message and they get weeded out. I don't like to do that. A lot of times I like, I, I like to take the calls myself. If it's a seller, if it's a mobile home seller, I think it's worth my time to pick up that phone call and talk to them. I can tell pretty quickly if that seller is going to be somebody that I want to deal with. So other mobile home investors might not agree, but dealing with sellers, I think that that is a good use of my time. Uh, big picture number three, uh, go to appointments to view the home and inspect. Now, are you going to do this in person? Are you going to do this virtually? Is this something that can be done virtually? Uh, yes, there are people that do this virtually, but there's a lot of things that you have to watch out for, especially if you're not looking at the home, touching the home. You have to have people in place that you trust. So that's big picture step number three. Step number four is negotiate the price and terms. That's pretty simple. Uh, now, when you're negotiating the price and terms, I will say that if you're talking to an owner-occupant, um, do you go into the deal? Do you go into this first appointment after you look at the home, after you, you see the home and you're making offers? Do you actually make an offer, you know, the first offer to go ahead and try to wholesale this home? Do you even say, hey, I'm going to wholesale your home? Are they going to look at you like a like cross-eyed, like they don't know what you're talking about? Um, or do you go in and do you make a lower priced offer first? Because remember, as an investor, you might want to buy this home for yourself. You want to buy it for yourself, you want to control it, you want to resell it, you want to fix it, sell it for cash, sell it for payments. Uh, that's how we make the most profit. Selling for pay, well, you're going to make the most profit hypothetically if you rent it out for just years and years and years. You make the next amount of, the largest amount of profit if you're selling it for payments. You can sell it high retail price with payments. You're going to sell it and you're going to leave money on the table if you sell it for cash. You buy it, clean it, fix it, sell it for cash or you can wholesale it. You get it under contract, you find somebody that wants it more, that wants to actually complete the deal, and then you wholesale it to them. Well, if you go into the negotiation starting off by saying, I can find a buyer for you for your full asking price, and I'm just gonna make a few thousand dollars more, that you've shown all your cards. Now it's very tough to go from that full price offer that you said you can give them. If you try to offer them less money, you kind of blew it. Now you don't really have 
the chance to buy the home because you've already said, hey, I have a buyer's list. I can find a buyer for you for what you're asking. So make sure you want to, you know, you, you can keep uh, kind of keep the cards up your sleeve, as they say. Each card can be an offer. Negotiation is important. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit later on this flow chart because you might still be saying, John, how do I know what the best deal to wholesale is? Like, when do I wholesale it? When do I buy it for myself? Um, and that is a bit of a math question and a bit of an art question because the person listening to my voice right now, you have your own finances, your own capital, your own time, your own credit, your own goals, uh, your own um, willingness to take uh, not risks, but willingness to do the work. I mean, if you don't want to do the work or be involved in a mobile home, wholesaling it is a valid option if you have somebody to wholesale it to. Uh, but if you want to do the work to the home, when you negotiate it, you should try to buy it yourself. A lot of sellers are going to want to work with a buyer. If you call a seller and you say, hey, Mr. Seller, I'm a buyer. I'm the guy you want to talk to. I, I, I want to buy your home and here's what I can do. A lot of sellers want to talk to the buyers. A lot of sellers might not want to talk to brokers or might not want to talk to a realtor. And that's very similar to what we're doing as, a, as wholesalers, as, as when we're wholesaling these mobile home contracts. We're being sort of in a, a personal property realtor. We're getting a home under contract and we're helping the seller find and screen a buyer to buy that home. Uh, and when you do that, when you're, when you're making that type of offer to a seller, um, some sellers don't want to deal with that. Some sellers have heard from enough realtors, enough brokers, when you start to say, especially if you say it over the phone, hey, I want to help you sell your mobile home, they're going to hang up on you. Sometimes, some sellers will do that because they don't want to deal with a realtor or an agent. They want to deal with someone that's going to buy their home. And that's okay. You can expect... If you go that route and over the phone say, I want to market the home and help you sell it, a lot of people are going to hang up the phone. So I don't bring that up when, I, when I'm first talking to the seller. Um, when we were talking about um, screen the calls, screening the calls does not mean talking about you know, making an offer over the phone saying, I want to help you sell your property. Because ideally, you should try to be buying that property first. And if you can't, then you can go ahead and wholesale it. But you really have to know your numbers. What is the seller asking? Again, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. So negotiate price and terms. Uh, big picture step number five, uh, get the home locked up under contract, plus an inspection report, uh, plus pictures, uh, and or a property disclosure report to let the next buyer know exactly what they're getting. Make it easy for that next buyer to let them know, hey, here's a list of repairs. Here's an estimate bid that I've gotten before. It may point you in the right direction or help you know kind of what repairs are needed. Uh, repairs. Do you do any repairs? As the wholesaler, as the middle person, uh, do you actually do any repairs? And if you do those repairs, what contract do you want to have in place? Um, if I do repairs in this situation, I'm usually partnering with the seller. It's not so much of a con as a wholesale. It's more of a I'm partnering with the seller. I know that their home is worth more money, especially fixed up. So I'm going to take help take. I'm going to take control of it, usually by either putting the property into a trust or adding my name to the title. I'm going to do work to the home. Who pays the lot rent? That, it depends. And then when you sell the home, what are you selling it for? Are you getting your money back first? Is there an additional amount on top of the money that you invested uh, to fix up that home? Who's paying lot rent in the meantime? Uh, step number seven, market the home and advertise the mobile home. The seller may help you to show the property. We're going to come back to that. That's very important. I know a big question mark that a lot of people have is, you know, when I'm selling these homes or when, I, when I'm helping to sell the home and I'm showing it, what if the buyers, what if the seller's there in the home? What if the seller is just sitting down? I have the buyer and the seller together. Is this whole deal going to blow up? And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But no, actually, the seller should help sell the home because a lot of times they, they are gonna be there. And if they're not gonna be there, then we can get the key and we can show it ourselves. Uh, big picture step number eight is um, a contract with the buyer. So number seven is advertise and market the home. And then we wanna go ahead and get a contract with the buyer slash deposit. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but we've marketed the home, now we've found a buyer, we're getting a contract with them and a deposit, 
And number nine, we make sure that the sale happens smoothly between the seller and the buyer. Uh, make sure that the buyer has everything to transfer the ownership in their name. You don't just want to take your money and then get out of the whole situation. You want to make sure that the buyer buys the home. You want to make sure that the seller sells the home and everyone has a good uh, experience with you. You don't just want to take that money and then run. We're going to talk about when to take that money here in just a little bit. And I realize that we're still very big picture. I know we've touched on a few things like specific things, but we've only touched on them. So let's now talk about what this is going to look like. Let's talk, let's put those steps that we just talk about, talk, talked about into this flow chart. What does that look like to you? Uh, then I want to talk about this number three packet right here. Let's jump into that. Okay. So when you are marketing, when you're advertising, when you're getting leads in, you're spending time and money and networking and expenses, hopefully not that many expenses. There are definitely ways um, to go and advertise for free and very inexpensive and then a little bit more expensive and a little more expensive and then but go with the free and very inexpensive ways to advertise and market first. Then once you're talking to a seller, understand what the seller is asking or what the seller is selling and ask yourself, is this home marketed well? Is it advertised well? Does the seller actually need my help? And let's see, is the seller advertising on Facebook, let go, offer up, Craigslist? Are they offering in, are they, uh, uh, advertising this in the correct section of, of one or more of these websites. If they are, then they probably don't need you. Then you can pass. If they are advertising this well on a nationwide website like one of these, the market is speaking. Anybody with an internet connection can find this home for sale and then can then go to the seller and say, I want to buy your home. So if they're advertising, if the seller's already advertising their mobile home for sale for $20,000 on Facebook or Craigslist or OfferUp or LetGo, you probably don't need to help them because they're already helping themselves. If it's on the wrong section and it's just in Craigslist and it's advertised you know, in the wrong section and spelled wrong and no one's seeing it, then, um, then you might want to pursue. But if it's online already, uh, we don't necessarily have to pursue it. Now I put this little check mark here because even though you're passing on it, you're saving time. That's a huge advantage. Don't waste your time talking to sellers that don't really need our help. If the home is not advertised well, uh, if it's advertised with just a tiny little sign in the window, uh, then the next question that you want to ask yourself is you have to know that you can sell these properties. This goes back to that other, um, piece of paper that I had when it says really, really, really know your numbers. I don't want you wasting a seller's time. I don't want you jerking around any sellers. If you get their property under contract within a couple weeks or less, like two weeks or three weeks or less, you should have a buyer lined up. We should be marketing the home like crazy. We should be advertising it offline, online with other techniques as well to make sure the, mar the market knows what we have for sale. If the seller's already advertising well, what makes us think that we're going to be able to sell it You know, if they're already doing their job? If they're not advertising it well, can we sell the mobile home and are you going to be able to profit? Right, This right here means are you going to make a minimum of $5,000? minimum of 5,000, all the way up to 30% of the seller's asking price. So if the seller's asking $30,000 for their mobile home, are you going to be able to sell that home and profit at least five grand or up to 30%? If you're going to profit over 30%, which would be, if they're selling for 30,000, that would be nine grand. So if you plan on making more than nine grand on the deal, don't, don't wholesale it. There'll be another way to do, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. But if you plan on, if, if you're going to make a decent amount and a decent amount is, you know, a few thousand dollars, I say five grand minimum. And I said 3000 before because five grand is people are going to talk you down, aim for five grand minimum. And then you'll find that over time, you know, if you can't sell the home for, let's say we're advertising it for 35, um, 30 to the seller and five to you. Well, that 5,000, when the seller talk, when the buyer, excuse me, talks, you know, nego negotiates and, and talks to you and say, Hey, I'm not going to give you 35 for this home. I'll only give you 33 or 32,000. Well, 
The seller still gets the 30,000 you promised. You are the one that gets the lower amount. Now your profit went from 5,000 if the seller was going to give you uh, if the buyer was going to give you 35,000, now the profit went down to 32,000 or 33,000. So make sure when you're first kind of assessing the deal, do you think you can make at least five grand or more? But not more than 30%. If you're going to do buy, um, if you're going to profit more than 30%, I'd rather you take the physical title of the mobile home or you work with an attorney to do a double closing. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Now, if you can make a minimum of five grand all the way up to 30% uh, of what the seller's asking, uh, then, so if you can't pass, if you're thinking like, no, I don't think I can do that. I'm just not sure. I, I don't think so. I think what the seller's asking is probably what it's worth, or it might not even be, be worth that much, or it's kind of retail. If that's a kind of retail price, what they're asking, pass on the deal. So if you can't make profit, pass on it and save yourself some time. If you know that you can make profit, you're very confident and you know your numbers, then we want to ask ourselves now, is the mobile home sold by the mobile home park or an actual owner occupant? Who's selling this mobile home? Is it a mobile home park or is it a mobile home occupant? Is it the actual mobile home you know, occupant that's in there? Let's, let's talk about this. Who is selling the actual mobile home, the mobile home park or the owner occupant? First one. Let's see what we got. Realtor, it's not even on the list. If you get, if you talk to a realtor or a broker or another mobile home investor, like I was, like I was saying, we're going to go ahead and pass on the deal and save yourself some time. So if this property is being sold by a realtor or broker or a mobile home investor, even if you believe you can wholesale it, even if uh, it's not being marketed well, I would encourage you to save your time and pass. Um, unless this is a mobile home on land, except unless there's some other extenuating circumstances, if you really feel that you can make a profit, then feel free to reach out to me and we can discuss it. But usually if it's with a realtor, broker, or mobile home investor already, and they're trying to wholesale it, just pass on the deal. There's probably other avenues out there. This is probably not the path of least resistance for you. The next thing I want to talk about is an owner occupant. Now, this is this is the majority of what you're going to find. You're going to find mobile homes that are out there that are being sold by regular people that used to live in the home. They still do and they're trying to sell it uh, or they haven't lived in the home for a couple months. They're trying to sell it. So let's talk about that. And again, when you're talking to these sellers, when you're making them offers, do you want to actually buy it for yourself? If you want to buy this home for yourself and your goal isn't to wholesale it, try to buy it yourself. Try to use the techniques that we already do to purchase it for cash or payments or balloon or trade or, excuse me, or an option or some other way for you to control the property. Uh, but if the seller is firm to their price, they want their $20,000 or their $30,000 or their $40,000, and you know that you can make more and it's not, it's not being advertised well, if that is the case, then there's a question I want you to ask that is not on here, but I do want to put it right here. The owner occupant, whenever I've been, I've been uh, taken advantage of in the past when it comes to wholesaling mobile homes and helping sellers get buyers so they can sell their properties. The only, t because we're dealing with personal property here, imagine a car, you get a contract to buy a car and you go to somebody else and you say, hey, I will sell you this contract to buy this car. And that person's going to be like, wait, what are you talking about? You have a contract on a car? No, I want to buy the car. This is weird. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just going to talk to the seller. Are you not the seller? Then why would I talk to you? Rem then that's because you're not typically dealing with an attorney. If it's just you, some random person who is trying to wholesale a mobile home, realize that it's personal property and the contracts we sign are only as good as the people signing them. Because even if somebody went around you, if they screwed you, if they took advantage of you, if they cut you out of the deal, and the buyer and the seller said, hey, we don't, we don't need this person. We don't need you. We're just going to get them out of the deal. And the buyer and the seller work together. I've been taking advantage of like that and screwed in the past. It only happens, well, 
99% of the time, it only happens with owner occupants and it only happens with owner occupants that are not, that are not on board. If you hear a couple things in this video, I want you to hear a couple things at least, but this is one of them. Only work with owner occupants that really want to work with you. Once you tell the seller your, your plan of, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to market the home for you. I want to get the home under a contract, whether that's a, a, a purchase contract or a consignment contract. A consignment contract is a little bit like a brokering sort of agreement where you are getting, uh, you, you're able to pay for the mobile home after you've sold it. So much like a consignment, if you consign a wedding dress or clothes, um, you're giving the, the, the owner of the mobile home is allowing you to resell the property before you actually own it. So if you're going to get on, if you're going to actually do a deal with an owner occupant and you tell them, hey, you're asking 30,000 for your home, I can find you a buyer for 33,000, I'm gonna keep that other 3,000 as my fee for finding the buyer, getting them lined up, negotiating, approved with the park, or make sure they can move the home, depending on if the home has to be moved or it can stay where it is. So once you tell the seller, once you tell the owner occupant your plan of how you can help them, there's gonna be two directions that they go. There's gonna be two directions that they lean. The, and this is very important. The first direction is, uh, t tell me what you're, you know, why should I go with you? Why shouldn't I go with someone else that called me? Or I was recently approached by so-and-so. I might want to go with them. Why should I go with you? Or, well, let me think about it. Let me talk to my husband or my wife or, um, you know, do you have something you could leave with me that might, you know, I could see more about what you're doing. There's going to be that school or that like way of, Hey, sell yourself to me. Or there's going to be, the seller's going to say, where have you been all my life? Yes. My goodness. Of course. Make whatever you can make. If you can give me my 30 grand, I don't care what you do. Like just where have you been? I can't wait. Thank you. What do I need to give you? What do I need to sign? Please help me. Those are two very distinct uh, attitudes. An attitude of where have you been all my life? And yes, we want to we want to work with those people. And then the other folks that are at a point in their in their sales journey of they don't need you yet. They don't need you yet, and they may not ever need you. And we're not here to sell ourselves. You're going to be doing a lot of work for the seller, um, and we do not need them to undercut you or to, to get around you or to take advantage of you. The only times that I've been taken advantage of in the past are whenever I worked with a seller that made me, uh, they, they, they weren't gung-ho about the, the, the process to begin with. Um, I was sort of pulling them along. I was sort of having to convince them of what I was doing. If that's the case, pull very politely back out and get out of there. You do not need to work with that seller. Maybe a month or two down the road when they realize they can't sell and they're really needing your help and really wanting you and calling you. And um, But that's a really big tip for the owner occupants. Now, if you're, if an owner occupant is selling the home, and you plan on selling it to this EU doesn't mean European Union. It means an end user. You're selling to somebody that wants to physically live in the home. If you're going to be, uh, again, uh, you're getting it from an owner occupant and you're selling it to an end user, I want you to use a consignment agreement, which is what we were talking about before. Now that can be downloaded. You can find that on this page. Um, but the consignment agreement, this little smiley face is something we're going to talk about right here. Okay. So the consignment agreement, um, now if you're selling it to, if it's going from an owner occupant to a mobile home investor, okay, if you, if you're not selling it to an end user and remember, if you're selling it to an end user or a mobile home investor, one of the reasons I want the, the seller so on board is because they should be helping you sell it. You and the seller are joining forces and the seller understands that you will be selling the home and making a little bit of money. That's also why I only want you making between 5,000 and 30% of what the seller's asking. If you start making more money, if the seller you know, let, let's say hypothetically the seller wants to sell their home for 30,000 and you know you can sell it for 20, uh, 50,000. 
They're like totally, you know, they, they just don't know what their home is worth. You think you can make 20 grand profit. If you tell the seller you're going to make a 20 grand profit, it's human nature to say, whoa, 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 I might, I must be doing something wrong. You're, you can make 20 grand and I can, I'm only making 30. I don't like that. I'm just going to not do the deal with you and list my home for hire or figure this out. So if you're going to be making a lot of money, more than 30% of the seller's asking price, more than nine or 10 grand, the seller's getting 30, you're getting 10, some sellers are gonna feel a little bad about that. They're gonna feel like, well, I feel like, you know, maybe John didn't do as much work as he should have. He's getting paid a lot of money and maybe I'll kind of go around him. So if you're gonna be making a lot of money, um, we wanna do something different um, we want to actually take the title, we want to close on the home, and then we want to resell it. Um, and you will have to get that money somewhere to actually take the title, unless you can convince the seller to actually hold on to the physical title. While you're advertising and marketing the home, most owner occupants won't give you the physical title if a physical title is needed. Most owner occupants won't hand over that title until they get the money. So if you're a smooth talker or if you're able just to convince the seller to hand over the title or if they're leaving the state and it's easier for them to give you the title, well, then so be it because you're going to take the title, which should be signed by them and the buyer's information is left blank and you're going to go from the seller, you're going to find the buyer and then have the buyer sign all the forms. You're going to take the money from the buyer. You're going to keep your portion. You're going to give the money to the seller. But again, the seller has to be 100% on board because if they don't trust you, they should help sell the home. They should help show it. They should help talk it up. They should help say that everything, you know, the park is wonderful. And yeah, you're going to love this and you're going to love that. And please. So the seller should be very invested. The seller should like you and want you and want to give you that money, want you to have that money. You're really helping them when no one else would. Um, so if you're selling it, now that I say all that, if you're selling it to a mobile home investor, you can trust the mobile home investor more than you can an end buyer. A mobile home investor is not going to go around you nearly as much because it's a small world in the mobile home community. And if you screw another mobile home investor, your name and reputation is definitely going to get out there. Uh, if you're sell, if you're, if your plan is to, you know, you're, you're getting this under contract with an owner occupant and you plan on selling it to an end user. It's important to know who you plan on selling this to. Remember, you have a buyer's list. You know who's looking for mobile homes. You know which parks are looking for mobile homes, which dealers are looking for mobile homes, which buyers are looking for mobile homes, uh, which other investors are looking for mobile homes. If you're selling it to a mobile home investor, you can use a wholesale contract with an assignment. That's going to be two separate forms, just like single family homes or mobile homes attached to private land. You'll get a wholesale contract and then you'll assign that contract to the mobile home investor. We'll talk about what this star means here in just a minute. That's what that is right there. Uh, let's go to the next one. If you are um, getting this under contract from a mobile home park, there's two situations with the mobile home park. Either the mobile home park is liquidating multiple homes. There's a mobile home park and it was just purchased by some individual who says, these are all 1980s homes. I don't want in there. They're old. I just want to get all brand new homes in there. So they're liquidating all of their homes. They have 5, 10, 20 homes, give or take. Uh, and they're liquidating them for very low prices. Maybe they want them out of the park. Maybe they don't. If you're selling to end users, somebody that wants to buy the homes for themselves, it's, it's first going to be difficult. And that's what I put that diff right there. This is going to be difficult because once you send people to the mobile home park and say, hey, go, go check out lot number 17. Well, they're also going to see all those other mobile homes for sale. So while you try to sell them that one home, they're going to say, well, hey, what about all these other homes here? I see like 20 other homes that look like they're abandoned. I'm going to try to buy one of these other ones for cheaper. Now, if you have an option agreement with the park, if you have an option agreement that you signed with the park, by the way, this consignment agreement, this is going to be signed by the owner occupant. This wholesale agreement, this is signed by the owner occupant. The assignment is signed by the mobile home uh, investor. And then the smiley face, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I think it was important to mention that even though I'm putting these forms over here,
the option agreement is actually going to be signed by the mobile home park. And that's an option agreement for you to have the option to buy these mobile homes at a specific price and it gives you a specific amount of time. Realize when you're talking to the mobile home park, they know what you're doing. They're not dumb and they understand, yeah, get these homes out of here. I don't want them. I don't want to pay for you to, to, to remove them. It's win-win. You get rid of them and that's your job is to find buyers for these. So if you can get an option agreement on all of these homes um, and you can get them in packages of like four or where you can have access to four at a time or one at a time or bulk at a time. Um, so if you're selling to an end user, I would like you to get an option agreement and then the smiley face we'll talk about in just a minute. And if you're uh, buying or if you're getting these under contract from the mobile home park um, and you plan on selling to a mobile home investor, here's what you can do. I would say uh, stick with the option agreement. Uh, you can actually use an option agreement. You can use the wholesale contract with assignment or you can just use a bird dog agreement. If you're brand new and you just hear about a park that's doing something like this, you can tell other mobile home investors if they already didn't know about it, you could tell them, hey, this is what's happening at that park. You can have your bird dog agreement signed so that if they do buy something at this park, they should live up to what the agreement says and pay you 500, 1,000, $2,000 per home. So one of these can be signed by, well, actually, no, the option agreement is going to be signed by the mobile home park. The wholesale agreement is going to be signed by the park. And then the assignment contract and the bird dog contract are going to be signed by the mobile home investor. That's if you decide to go that way. So if you decide to go the option agreement route, then the only person signing that is going to be the mobile home park and you as the investor. Uh, if you go the wholesale contract route with the mobile home investor, um, that's still going to be signed by the park for the homes, and then the assignment is going to be signed by the mobile home investor. Or if you just go with the bird dog agreement because you're brand, brand new and you don't know how to get things under contract yet, you can just have a bird dog agreement between you and the mobile home investor. Uh, and these stars represent how you're going to get paid, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. The next route is if the mobile home park is just selling one um, or more and it's near retail prices. This is something that mobile home parks do all the time. They get homes back and they sell them. They get them back through abandonment, eviction. There was a, somebody that passed away, unfortunately. And now the mobile home, the park has that mobile home and they might have fixed it up. They may not. And they want more of a retail price, not rock bottom, maybe retail maybe below retail, but you know, it's just somewhere in there and we're going to do our normal negotiation with them. Um, if that's the case, you know, if it's not rock, rock, rock bottom prices, if it's just normal prices, then if you're selling to an end user, it's real simple, pass. <laughs> if you're selling to an end user, uh, the, the park is going to do that. The park doesn't need you. The park is going to sell the home unless you can get into uh, a relationship with the mobile home park that you're the full-time broker, you're the full-time person that they go to. When they get a home back, they just give it to you for you to sell it because they might not want to get their license. So you should pass on it unless you're a licensed broker and then you can offer the park to be their go-to licensed broker. Uh, but otherwise, if it's just a regular mobile home park selling a regular mobile home and you plan on selling that to an end user, um, yeah, if you're just buying it from a regular mobile home park, selling a regular home, you can pretty much pass on the deal if you don't plan on keeping it yourself. And if you plan on selling it to a mobile home investor, you say, oh, there's a good, you know, home in a park and I think it's worth a little bit of money. Um, you know, how can I tell this mobile home investor and make some money, make just a little bit of money? Well, the park isn't going to want you to wholesale it because it's just not how reality works and the park isn't going to the park's going to want to make their money. You're going to gum up the, the works. So if you can tell the, this mobile home investor, if you can have them sign a bird dog agreement saying, hey, I want to find you good deals. Can we sign this agreement saying if I find it, you'll give me a fee, 500 bucks, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. Can we sign something like that? Get that investor to sign the uh, bird dog agreement, then push them over 
into looking at this into looking at this park and say, oh, okay, by the way, I found some you know homes for sale over in this park or over in this neck of the woods. It doesn't mean that that investor has to buy them, but if they do, then you'll get paid hopefully that bird dog fee. Now, how do you get paid? We talked about all of this and you're wonderful for staying on this. I really hope that this video is helping a lot. There's definitely a lot of like, well, if this happens, what about this? And if this happens, what about this? And, you know, when do I bring up this? And it depends. It's different for different sellers, depending on when they started advertising, what they're selling, the time of the year, their repairs, uh, their emotions, and a lot of other things as well. Let's talk about how you're getting paid. These smiley faces, these refer to, typically you can see the smiley faces are when you're selling to an end user. If you're selling to an end user, I want you making your profit when you collect an, a conditional uh, refund deposit. When you get an end user interested in that mobile home, they walked through the mobile home for the first time and they love what they see. Or they call you back after and they love what they see. They're going to go ahead and give you a deposit for two, three, four, five, six thousand dollars to hold that home while they get approved at the park or while they get everything else lined up. Now, it's conditional because if they don't get approved at the park, they get their money back. But if they get approved at the park, if they can stay there, or if they back out for any other reason besides not getting approval at the, at the community, and if it has to be moved, then that doesn't matter because they're not going to get approved at the park. But the only way they're going to get their deposit back is if they don't get approved at the park. If they do, or if they don't need to, this is the money that you get. You get that non-refundable or that, that conditional refundable um, deposit. So the seller is going to give you that money to hold on to the mobile home or so that you can stop showing it and they can get it. And then you've got your money. You've, you've been paid from this deposit. Now the seller's doing their thing. They're trying to get the rest of the money lined up. They're trying to get the mover lined up. They're getting approved at the park. Um, they're ready to close on it. Then you facilitate an inter um, a meeting between the seller and the buyer. And remember, the seller knows what you're doing. The seller's happy with what you're doing. The buyer knows that you're a financial friend and you're helping the seller sell. And you've been very upfront from that from the beginning. Even when you're talking to the park manager, if there's a mobile home park manager involved, meaning that it's a mobile home in a park, I want this park manager to know who you are. You can't just, well, it's difficult to do this without talking to the manager. You're not going to buy the home yourself, but you're a financial friend. You're helping the seller sell the property. You can even let them know, hey, I'm an investor. I was going to help buy the home, but they don't, I, we, we can't get a deal. So I'm advertising the home. I'm helping to find them a buyer. Um, so we may be sending you, uh, we, we may be having more buyers come into the office here. This is what you're going to tell a park manager. And the reason you're telling this to the park manager is because you need to know what the application process is. You can't be ignorant of that. When you're talking to a buyer and these buyers are going to call you, they're not going to call the seller. These end user buyers, they're going to go ahead and call you. And when they call you, you need to tell them, okay, this is the home. This is the repairs. This is the address. This is the price. This is the terms. This is the qualification for the park. If the home has to be moved, yes, there's axles, yes, there's tires. You might want to call up this mover or this mover. And if it doesn't have to be moved, if it can stay in the community, yeah, what's the application process like? Who do you go see at the front office? When do they go? When's the best time of the day? So the seller has to know what you're doing. The buyer should know kind of who you are. They don't need to know how much you're getting paid by any means. And then the park should know that you're there as well. Because if you send buyers to the park, to get approved, they're gonna say, well, hey, John from lot number 15 sent me over there. They're gonna be like, John doesn't own that. What are they talking about? Who, who is this John character? And that's when I should have already went into the office, excuse me, explaining myself that I am not gonna buy their home. We tried to buy it, but we talked, I liked them. We all worked something out and I have a buyer's list. So I'm gonna be sending some people to the office to try to get approved. They might bring up my name, but it's got nothing to do with me. You know, I'm just helping the seller. So if you explain yourself to the park manager, we don't wanna be dodgy. We don't wanna just assume that people know who we are. Clarity is very important in this business. And if you're not giving people clarity, they could be going around you, they could be confused, things could be happening behind your back. 
And we don't want that to happen. So we want to have um, clarity with the seller. We want to have clarity with the mobile home. We want to have clarity with the park and what they want and what they expect if there's a park involved. We want to have clarity with the buyer. They should know what they're buying. We should be very clear with them and we shouldn't waste our time. Wholesaling, like I said from the very beginning, we want to know our numbers uh, and we don't want to waste our time with people that are already advertising correctly or we're going to make a skinny deal. If it's too skinny, we don't want anything to do with it. Now, what does this star mean? This star is when you're selling to other mobile home investors. When you're selling to other mobile home investors, you can trust them. Well, you maybe can't trust them, but you should go into the uh, you should go into it trusting them that they are going to pay you uh, your profits either before or after closing from an investor. And that's because the investor understands they they hopefully won't do the deal with you. On, you know, they, they've already done their math. They know they can pay for the home, they can pay you, and they're gonna have a good reputation. You can bring them more opportunities. When we sell to a mobile home investor, that's the goal, is that they want to do more business with us. And if we find something in the future that they want, we can, again, pass that lead to them and get paid again. So it's it's win-win, it's symbiotic. I hope that this helped and made sense. We're gonna talk about what this doesn't cover right now and it's some things that we've already alluded to and i'm going to express i'm going to talk more about those hey okay number three um so questions to ask yourself right now questions that we didn't necessarily talk about can you physically hold on to the titles while you're advertising the home Sometimes some sellers are just so frustrated and ready to be gone, they will hand a title over to you to say, hey, here's my title, I wanna be gone, do something with it. I don't even wanna make money, you just take it and get rid of it. Now, are you gonna pay lot rent? Are you not gonna pay lot rent? Do they expect you to pay lot rent? Are you being on the hook for anything? All of these are questions that you need to ask yourself. It's very easy to lose money with mobile homes. Um, especially when you don't know what you're doing, okay? So we don't, I don't want you assuming anything, um, but can you physically hold on to the title? Some sellers are okay with this, and most sellers are not okay with this because they really just don't trust you. Uh, is there a title available? Are they the ones on the title, or are they not the ones on the title? Is a title needed? In some states, a title isn't even required, depending on the age or the state. Um, is an attorney needed? That's a great question, depending on who you're working with and how much they trust you, and if you're doing this out of state. Um, is the mobile home hours away or is it out of state or close by? Now, do you need an attorney? An attorney is going to be the trusted person. The attorney is going to be the person that if the seller or buyer don't trust you, the attorney is going to be the middle person. They're going to hold on to the title from the, from the seller. They're going to take the money from the buyer and then they're going to divvy up everything. You're going to get your fee. The uh, buyer is going to get their title. The seller is going to get their money. And so bringing in an attorney, if you can find an attorney that will help facilitate a personal property deal, um, and you may have to call up a number of real estate attorneys to find that, um, that might be something that you want to use. Now you can have an attorney who is uh, very reputable, and now you can say, well, hey, listen, you don't have to trust me to get your money. You put the ownership, let's sign everything, all these papers and all the title. We'll put it with the attorney. And then when we find a buyer, the buyer will put their money in and then everyone's gonna get what is promised to them. So do you need an attorney? No. Do you want an attorney? Maybe. Can you find an attorney that will actually help you? Maybe. Uh, does the mobile home need to be moved from its current location by a specific date? Don't stress yourself out. If, they, if the home has to be moved in like a week, don't stress yourself out. There's these sellers, for whatever reason, they're just contacting now, you're just finding it. There's gonna be more opportunities like this. So if it has to be moved too soon, don't stress yourself out. There's other homes out there. You can try to pursue it just to get practice and build up more of a contacts. Um, but again, don't stress yourself out. Uh, is the profit that you plan to make, oh, like I said before, more than 30%. If you're making too much money, uh, the seller might have a problem with that. Do you hold the title? Do you do a double closing with the attorney like we, like we mentioned? Uh, do you not want the buyer or seller to know your profit? Do you then use an attorney? Do you use a simultaneous closing? Realize that when you're using a consignment agreement, the seller is the one that knows how much you're making. And if you're using a wholesale contract, the buyer 
is typically the one that knows how much you're making. Now, if for some reason you don't want anybody to know how much you make, uh, that would be doing a simultaneous closing, a double closing, um, or that would be by taking the physical title, holding on to it, buying it, and then reselling the title. So there's ways to do this type of transaction um, without letting the buyer or seller know, but you're most likely gonna have to come up with the money to buy the home in the first place, or you're gonna have to use a closing attorney or a real estate attorney if you can find one that will help you facilitate that deal, where you can use the uh, buyer's money to then fund the deal and pay the seller. Um, and then the last thing, do you make repairs? We touched on this before. Do you make repairs to the seller's home if you know that that home can sell for way more money? Is that something that you do? And if you do that, what does that look like? For me, if I'm repairing a home, that's more of a partnership agreement. Um, if I'm putting the money up, I want to get all that money back and more when I sell the home. Uh, and depending on how much more I can sell it for, I want to buy it and then fix it up and, and take you know most of the profit myself. Um, if I don't have to partner with the seller, I don't want to have to do that. Um, and then there's also repair contracts saying, okay, you're going to put up this much repairs. Or if you're not putting money into the repairs, let's say you're, you're paying them the, the, the lot rent. Do you actually do that? Do you try to um, wholesale a mobile home or, or sell it with consignment, but then you're actually paying the lot rent because the seller can't pay it. And it's a choice of, okay, lose the deal because the, the, the park's going to take back the home. Or do you actually cough up the money and pay the seller's lot rent while you try to sell it? And then what happens? Do you get the money back? Do you not? Do you sell it? Do you lose it? What happens? And so I don't want, and then that kind of goes back to this, knowing what you can sell for. We really have to know if there's a couple things to learn on this video now. There's been a few like good nuggets. One of them is to definitely make sure you know that you can sell it. And I said that once or twice or three times already on this, on this video. You really need to know your numbers uh, in, this, in this business. And wholesaling, you would think, is very good for us investors when we first get started because we don't have a lot of money and that's a good way to build money. But it's also a really good way to waste your time because you're thinking like, yeah, I know I can sell it for this much. Why couldn't I? And you don't or you can't and then people take advantage of you and they're undercutting you and you realize, oh, I should have never worked with this particular seller in the first place. So I hope that that all makes sense. We talked about a lot of stuff on this video. Um, you're definitely going to have more questions. You're definitely going to have more thoughts and concerns. The paperwork that I've mentioned here can be found on the downloadable forms um, in this lesson. And there's also a demo copy so you can see how to fill out everything. Let me know any questions or thoughts that you have. Uh, like I said, uh, questions, concerns, you can always email me anytime. Uh, if you need to reach me, you can reach me at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Again, that's support at mobilehomeinvesting.net or mobilehomeinvesting. <laughs> or reach out to mobilehomeinvesting.net uh, for a lot more mobile home uh, investing education. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.